okay so today let's see what chromatography is and the different types of chromatography and um, i have sorted out the required points for this so that in order to make it easier for you to study okay okay so let's see what chromatography is we all know chromatography is a laboratory technique that is used for separation of a mixture right yeah and that mixture which is to be separated is solved in a fluid or it can be gas solvent or water called mobile phase and it is carried through a system that will be fixed right on um, it can be on a, either a column or maybe a capillary tube or a sheet okay and that is called as stationary phase so we have two different phases one is mobile phase and the other will be the stationary phase so now let let's get into that okay the main thing like the term chromatography was coined by the scientist named sweat okay in 1906 okay so as i said it involves the separation of mixtures due to differences in the distribution coefficient okay that is the main principle the separation is based on the difference in the distribution coefficient of sample components between two different phases okay one of these phase is a mobile phase as i said and the other is a stationary phase okay and the mobile phase can be a gas a liquid or a supercritical fluid okay it can be either a gas or solvent or a liquid or i mean water or anything okay and the stationary phase may be a solid or it can be a liquid gel or mixture of solid and liquid okay then these are the main principle of chromatography okay in all chromatographic separations the sample is transported in a mobile phase yes okay the sample is transported in a mobile phase the mobile phase is then forced through a stationary phase held in a column or on a solid surface okay the stationary phase does not react with the mobile phase or the sample yes the stationary phase remains constant okay it doesn't react with the mobile phase it allows the mobile phase to move okay then the sample then has the opportunity to interact with the st stationary phase as it moves past it yeah and then samples that interact greatly then appear to move slowly yeah those samples that is present in the mobile phase when it reacts with the stationary phase the one that so shows more uh, greater interaction will move slowly okay and those samples that interact weakly they move more quickly more faster so you can see the different spots you might have done it practically in your labs yeah and then the various constants in the sample get separated due to the difference in their partition or distribution behavior remember the samples are separated based on the difference in their partition or distribution behavior between the stationary and mobile phase okay now let's see what is partition and adsorption chromatography okay partition versus adsorption chromatography chromatographic methods are divided into two types as we said that is partition and adsorption chromatography according to how the solute molecules bind or interact with the stationary phase okay so the partition chromatography what is partition chromatography it's there in the name itself it is the distribution of a solute between two liquid phases okay partition occurs there this may involve direct extraction using two liquids or it may use a liquid immobilized on a solid support as in case of paper okay thin layer chromatography and also gas liquid chromatography here what they use they use two liquids or it may use a liquid immobilized on a solid support yeah uh, in paper chromatography thin layer chromatography and so uh, gas liquid chromatography they use a solid support right like paper or a glass thin layer glass okay and from uh, they allow the mobile phase to move on it yeah and for partition chromatography the stationary phase consists of inert solid particles coated with liquid adsorbent okay and the distribution 
of solutes between the two phases is based primarily on solubility differences okay the distribution is based on the solubility differences the distribution may be quantified by using the partition coefficient that is kd okay partition coefficient the partition coefficient kd this is one of the most important formulas okay yeah, that uh, they they may, may i ask in the exams okay so fine guys just concentrate on this the partition coefficient kd is defined as the ratio of concentration of a compound in two phases that is a and b at equilibrium that is kd is equal to concentration of the compound in stationary phase divided by concentration of the compound in mobile phase this ratio gives the partition coefficient that is kd and now let's see what is adsorption chromatography okay so adsorp adsorption chromatography refers to the use of a stationary phase or support such as an ion exchange resin that has a finite number of relatively specific binding sites for solute molecules okay so there will be a finite number of binding sites in stationary phase okay and adsorption chromatography relies on relatively specific interactions between the solute molecules and binding sites on the surface of the stationary phase okay the it depends on a specific interactions okay the attractive force between solute and support may be ionic hydrogen bonding or hydrophobic interactions okay so the main attractive forces that it depends on is the ionic hydrogen bonding or hydrophobic interactions and the common adsorbents that are used are silica alumina and carbon well now let's see what paper chromatography is usually basically like uh, we might have done everyone might have done this in maybe in 11th standard or 12th standard uh, as uh, your practicals okay so paper chromatography works on the principle of partition as we said earlier and what it does it it separates dried liquid samples okay for example mixture of amino acids the amino acids can be separated using paper chromatography okay and uh, the values can be related to know which amino acid is the following okay the separated one yeah and those who have done this might uh, can connect easily and then the stationary phase is the filter paper yes made of cellulose molecules that are hydrated and then the mixture of amino acids migrates on this filter paper yes the amino acids mixture like in the form of solvent it migrates on this filter paper the mobile phase is a solvent system that contain water and other solvents okay and now the principle the principle of paper chromatography as the solvent passes through an area of a paper by capillary action containing a solute the solute will begin to partici pa like partition itself between the aqueous and organic phases in proportion to its relative solubility in the two phases okay as the solvent passes through an area of the paper by capillary action containing a solute okay it passes by a capillary action and the solute will begin to partition itself between the aqueous and organic phases okay based on the solubility okay the more soluble the solute is in the organic phase the faster will be the solute carried along by the organic phase okay remember this point guys the more soluble the solute is in the organic phase the faster will be the solute carried along by the organic phase conversely right the same thing the greater the affinity to water the slower the solute will move with respect to the solvent front okay the greater the affinity to water the slower the solute will move with respect to the solvent front well the relative rate of flow that is rf value how to calculate it that is rf value is calculated as the distance traveled by the solute divided by the distance traveled by solvent fine that is the formula for that yeah 
and there are three, three techniques for developing the chromatogram it can be ascending method it can be descending method and also it can be circular method okay let's see what ascending paper chromatography is okay ascending method it nothing but it consists of a reservoir and the paper is held in the position by means of a clamp okay we like we take a container and in that a solution that is the solvent will be added to that and the paper is held in the upright uh, direction okay it is held by means of clamp okay the lower end of the paper is dipped into the solvent yes you can imagine now if you have done it will be easier for you uh, else you can imagine like the paper uh, the end one end of the paper that is lower end of the paper is just dipped in the solvent okay and the sample is spotted in a position just above the surface of the solvent okay like uh, the the surface where we dip till the surface that we dip in the solvent and above that we will put a spot of that sample okay that we have to separate like maybe a mixture of amino acids yeah and then the solvent moves vertically up the paper okay it moves up by the like we have learned that earlier that by capillary action it moves up okay it absorbs water and the water uh, the solvents it moves up okay yeah it's has said here the solvent moves vertically up by the paper by capillary action separation of sample is achieved and this method is preferable for quick analysis of a large number of substances okay this is the fastest and quickest method yeah you can see the image see this is the show you see okay this is the paper filter paper okay and this is the solvent yeah it is mentioned here this is the solvent we dip the paper in the solvent and uh, we mark like we put the entire solution solution uh, like solvent is kept here the entire mixture that we need to separate is spotted here like just above the level of solvent and then we leave it for separation usually by time by uh, like through capillary action the water moves up the same way these what happens this mixture it gets separated okay and based on their uh, binding process they get separated and based on their uh, values we can identify which amino acids has separated and which is which and which are the amino acids okay fine hope you understood this let's move forward this is the sample animation of paper or tlc chromatography you can see we have uh, like three different samples and it is being placed in the solvent okay and then the solvent is made to run and now you can see the three spots that is they have they are differentiated based on their partition coefficient okay based on their binding solubility yeah so this is the sample okay now let's see what is descending paper chromatography in this method the solvent is kept in a trough at the top of the chamber trough okay so the solvent is kept in a trough at the top of the chamber the paper is then suspended in the solvent and the lid is placed at the top can you imagine guys the paper is then suspended in the solvent okay the solvent is kept in the trough at the top of the chamber okay it will be at the top and then the paper is suspended in the solvent and the liquid moves down see here the liquid moves from up to down by capillary action and by gravitational force in this case the flow is more rapid as compared to the ascending method so the chromatogram is completed in a short time okay so descending paper chromatography takes much less time than the ascending paper chromatography since uh, it it is work it works based on uh, the gravitational force as well as the liquid is moving from up to down right so it is completed in a short time okay fine now let's see what is now let's see what is circular paper chromatography okay the sample spot is placed at or near the center of the paper which is held horizontally see here the paper is held horizontally 
and the solvent is applied at the center from where it spreads radically okay and then the substances are thus spread into a series of concentric bands okay so circular paper chromatography works like this and now let's see how to detect okay like we have to know right which amino acid or which solvent it is so various methods are adopted to identify the substances the components can be identified by spraying chemical reagents imparting specific color reactions okay one of the method is like by spraying chemical reagents so when we spray the, those reagents there will be specific reactions occurring there and the color formations occurs amino acids can be identified by spraying ninhydrin which gives purple color okay ninhydrin when we spray ninhydrin onto that it uh, if it is the amino acid then it turns into purple color other methods that are involved for detection are like uv and ir absorption fluorescence radioactivity etc and now applications okay so where all we apply this like for the separation of fatty acids we can use for the separation of carbohydrates and as we said for amino acids okay identification of amino acids okay now let's see what is thin layer chromatography we went through paper chromatography and now let's see thin layer chromatography okay so how it is done it is mainly used for the separation of low molecular weight compounds okay mainly used for the separation of low molecular weight compounds it may be carried out by the adsorption principle what is the adsorption principle okay if the thin layer is separated by an adsorbent such as alumina or by the partition principle okay uh, it is based on two principles okay maybe it can be either adsorption principle or can be the partition principle okay based on the adsorbent that we use okay next let's see the method how to do slurry of stationary phase is made in a solvent okay a slurry of stationary phase is made in a solvent okay the slurry is poured onto the glass plate and spread evenly okay the slurry is poured onto the glass plate and spread evenly and the plates are then dried by keeping in an oven at 40 degrees centigrade celsius okay so yes you might have done this thin layer chromatography too in your labs so maybe you can imagine that and the sample is applied using a micro pipette and dried okay the sample is added at the spot using a micro pipette and it is dried and then what the plate that is the coated plate is then placed in a chamber containing the solvent okay and the solvent acts as the moving phase okay and then the plate is removed from the bottle when the solvent is close to the top of the plate okay when the solvent it uh, almost reaches the upper side but the plate is removed and the plate is dried spots are located by natural color by fluorescence or by spraying various agents okay okay fine now let's see the advantages of tlc that is thin layer chromatography over paper chromatography okay when compared to paper chromatography tlc is faster faster and it gives a better separation it is more versatile as the solid on the plate can be varied now let's see the application of tlc the tlc is used to separate small molecules it is used to separate amino acids nucleic acids lipids steroids terpenoids hydrocarbons and carbohydrates it is tlc is used to identify drugs contaminants and adulterants okay it is also used to resolve the plant extracts etc so guys see you in the next video with the remaining chromatography techniques goodbye